Joy and welcome to my studio. Today we're working on our cork pumpkin and this is just a wonderful simple project. We're using a big cork and a little tiny cork and it just goes together so fast so you can whip it up for Halloween or Thanksgiving. So let's get started. So our big cork and like I said, I have a limited number of these at MiriamJoy.com, so make sure you get yours right away. But I love the look of these, and I found them, and I said, I know there's so much potential in this. And I just think that this is so cute. So we're not going to change anything on him, but for his stem, we're going to use a half of a regular wine cork. And all I did was take my serrated knife and cut it in half and then use one half for that. So we're just going to, we also have the little corks at miriamjoy.com as well, but we're just going to take our pumpkin now and any type of acrylic paint. I can't tell you how many times I get the question, what type of acrylic paint? Any type of acrylic paint. I pick mine up at Walmart. Um, there are better brands that cover, but for this one, you don't necessarily want it to cover as well. I'm just going to use a base coating brush. I have put it in my water and dried it off just so my paint doesn't absorb into it. And I am just going to paint my whole cork orange. You could use whatever type of orange you wanted. If there was a different type of orange that you like or pumpkin, you can do that as well. You may have a pumpkin color that you like or you may have a deep orange. It is really up to you whatever you think that should be. If you have one of my dry boards, you can paint all of the sides at once. If not, you may want to paint around the sides and then do either the top or bottom, let that dry, and then do the other sides. So we're going to go ahead and get that all painted up for you. I think that one coat is just enough and I don't go back and fill these holes in. I love that look that it has so I'm going to leave it just like that. But I'm also going to just take a medium brown. I've got the Nutton Meg Brown. You could do a dark brown, whatever you prefer. Again, this is going to be totally up to you, whatever color you really like. And I'm going to do the top as well. And we won't have to do the bottom. I'm going to let those dry really well, and then we'll start assembling our, or adding our other colors to it. Now that my paint is all dry, I'm going to do something a little bit different than I didn't do in this one. And the cork isn't straight across, so it tips forward and at an angle. So we're going to fix that. I'm going to take my serrated knife and I want to pick out what I want for my top and my bottom. And I want to go with the lines and you either want to pick one way or the other. I'm going to do mine across. So I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to go up to that medium part and I'm going to cut straight down. So hopefully we get more of that even layer and it probably was better to do this before we painted it for it to sit on and that's already better might be able to do just a tiny bit more but we've already got that standing at a better angle and we're going to use a wood base to put it on just a small one if you ever need one we've got those at marinejoy.com that's something we try to carry and we're going to start and we're going to talk about our lines so remember staying with the bottom part, that's the middle of the bottom, so that would be the middle of the top. Now your bottom part of your pumpkin isn't as round, it's flatter. So we want to kind of do a shape, but when we get down here we don't want to bring it to that point. We want to just kind of run it off. So we're going to put our little ridges in our pumpkin is what we're kind of after. And I'm going to do one in between those on each side and 
again fall them off where these you met up at the point here you're going to do this on both sides and then we're also going to do just one completely all the way around the middle we're going to shade on the side we're going to shade to the right of the lines and we're going to flip it over and do uh, would be to the left of these lines we want to pick a color that's darker that's going to add our shadow I'm going to be using red iron oxide but you can use any darker red um, brown anything like that I try to hate to give people colors because I kind of want them to see what they have or what works for them. They might not like this color necessarily. I'm going to be shading with my um, uh, half inch um, angle. You can shade with a flat. Um, I do have a video on how to shade that goes into a little bit more detail. But I'm going to dip it in the water, just pat it on both sides of my napkin, dip it into my paint about halfway or less and then we're going to be blending this out and you should go from one solid color to no color you should not have paint all the way through your brush and then I'm going to take it once I get that ready and I'm just going to bring that down and I've ran out of paint here so I'm going to reload because I walked it all out on the Paper. You never want to go back over it until it's dry because you just lift the paint back up like I'm doing right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on the side. Now just remember this is not supposed to be a perfect project. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about it. This is just supposed to be a fun hallway a holiday decoration so just go with the flow and remember nature isn't perfect and neither should we be and just put it on do the front and the back and then once you got the front and the back done just divide your pumpkin in half and you can put that with a white line down the middle as well and go just all the way around the pumpkin until you have reached the other side. So I've got my lines all done and you can take a damp q-tip and remove your white lines and I'm going to use a stipple brush or a um, fabric brush. I like the curved kind. I don't like the flat kind and the better and the older it is the better I like it. I'm going to be using like a straw color. This is Empire Gold but any kind of yellowish brown color um, and we're going to pull this out we're not going to go directly into our paint we're going to pull this straight out of the paint itself so that we're not getting this massive paint spot when we go to pounce and we're just going to be pouncing in the center of this and on our outsides and in the middle of our little pumpkin sections ridges I guess is what they'd be called so kind of where your highlights would be uh, if the Sun was reflecting off of them uh, where your highlights would be opposite of your shadows now on these edges I'm just gonna pounce right directly on those this is going to be a personal opinion, whether you like a lot or a little. So that's going to be totally up to you. And sometimes when it dries in, it's a little bit lighter, so you may think that you need a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this side here and this side will also be a highlight. So here is our crease and our pumpkin. So I'm going to have a highlight here and a highlight here. So on both sides of our pumpkin. See how 
I picked up too much there because I was in a hurry. That's what you don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on this side as well and flip it over and do it on the back. We've done that all the way around and we've got that to highlights and our low lights. And I want to show you these brown spots on here. And you use this when you want something to look old or real country looking or something like that. Now these got a little bit too much water in here and you can see they're not as bright and they're more watered down and we're starting to spread a little bit more. So we want more solid spots. And this is a great thing to do outside. I'm just going to show you just a little bit and then I'm going to go outside. I'm going to be using my fan brush and I'm going to use burnt umber. Burnt umber usually stays the same in any color palette or brand line that you go with. I'm going to dump my fan brush into the water. And so we're going to thin this out a little bit. You don't want to do it straight color because it's too uh, thick that way. Take another heavier brush, should be a bigger brush, and just start to tap on it. And you will get all of these little brown spots. And you want to be really careful when you're doing this because you will not realize where all those little brown spots are going. So that's why I suggest doing it outside. If you have a dry board from Miriam Joy, you can do this on your dry board, flip it over, and continue to work. If you do not have a dry board, don't flip it over wait for it to dry all the way now the wetter the paint the bigger the spots are the more paint the bigger the spots the, the less paint the spots start to get smaller and I'd rather have smaller than bigger and you may want to practice a little bit but the higher you have it up the wider they're gonna spread and that wasn't too bad we didn't make too big of a mess on my table but we're going to go ahead and let this dry really really well and then we'll talk about varnishing it now that our brown dots have uh, finished we need to go ahead and spray varnish it you could use you could even brush varnish it if you want to use a satin or um matte i wouldn't use a gloss but that's a personal opinion i think it should be more kind of rustic so anything krylon rust-oleum whatever you have that you're comfortable with you can go ahead and use so i'm going to take this i'm going to go ahead and hot glue this onto our gourd gourd cork you can tell what i work a lot on decide where i want my front and back to be and so we've got that guy there and then we're going to glue our little cork on top, right in that middle, line him up. I got a little bit of glue coming out, but I'm not going to worry about it because I'm going to get my leaves in there. I found these velvet leaves at Michael's. I found them last year, and I absolutely love these. So um, if you don't, put some gold veins with glue and then glitter them, and then I think that really helps kind of brighten them up and adds a lot to it. I'm just gluing the bottom of these and we're going to stand these up a little bit but they're going to be stood up more when we put our wire in them. So the wire is going to help kind of give our leaves some life there and hold them up a little bit. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute here. Okay. Just going to show a little bit right there, so I'm going to go ahead and get him. I used two red and one yellow. You can use whatever kind of combination you want, but I'm going to keep it in threes because things look better when they're even, odd, not even. So we're going to take some floral wild, and I picked this up at Dollar Tree, and I'm going to bend my edges in and I always do that for safety reasons so if anybody gets around it they're not going to poke themselves or if you've got a child playing and you're not going to be freaked out about anything like that so I'm just going to wrap it around a pencil or whatever you want to add shape with it I'm going to make three of these again three and 
they don't all have to be kind of that uh, around the pencil. We can kind of go back and forth a little bit here and just play with them. And you can bend them with your hands. That's a thing that's really nice about this type of wire. It's really simple to use. And the bottom part always keeps that a little bit straight because we want to kind of push it in just a little bit. So we're going to get our third little wire in here. And if you have other ways you think would look better to decorate, go for it. I'm just here to suggest add your own twist to it. That's what's so awesome. Okay, so got our last little one here. So remember how I said we wanted to kind of use these to stand up our leaves. So I'm gonna kind of go between these leaves into the pumpkin a little bit and push them into that cork. And you could give that a squirt of glue if you wanted to, but this is gonna help support those leaves and kind of lift them up a, a little bit and give them movement instead of being so flat and boring. If you can kind of see how I've done that. And even if you need to come back behind it and stick it in, don't be afraid to go through your leaf if you need to a little bit. And stick those down in. So we've got that more movement there. And you could even glue like that guy up there a little bit if you wanted to as well. Just so we're starting to get some movement. They're not all flat. And I'm going to do this last little guy kind of up front a little bit. I just think these are so simple and wonderful. I would love, love to have one for each person at the table. I guess you wouldn't want that many people there if you did that, but just something kind of different. You also could poke this with a bead reamer or something to make that go in a little bit easier as well. So anything like that to kind of help. And then I just put some little guys in. You could use a little piece of the garland or I'm going to use some little berries here. Whatever you think looks good and I'm gonna do one on each side on this one I'm probably just going to do two I might stick this one into that middle cork a little bit if I can well, we might just glue him on a little bit there and not quite worry about it quite as much you can put a little raffy of bow right there and I think I might do that a little, I put in one at the bottom, so maybe I'll put just a little one there as well. Make this guy a little bit. Longer here, make him turn up. You could put a third one in that back if you think that it needs it. That's kind of a personal opinion. And like I said, I think I'm going to put a smaller one there, but I'm going to glue one at the bottom as well. But really, that is about all we have to our little cork pumpkin. So wasn't that a lot of fun? Make sure you come on over to MiriamJoy.com. We've only got a limited supply of these corks and they're just going to brighten up any Thanksgiving table. So visit us at MiriamJoy.com for lots of other fun products as well. Thank you. God bless you.